The TR21X irons from Homer are the latest in the player's distance category, so just how far will these go? Let's find out. TR21X are a player's distance iron. Think something like the P770s from TaylorMade. They're designed to have that more player's look, but they're going to give you extra distance, and especially with these, they have a big focus on that distance point. Now here you can see from the back, they kind of replicate some of those feelings and shapes you would get from a blade iron, but they have a much thicker sole, which is going to give you that more forgiveness and distance. Now I've got a 10 iron, a 7 iron and a 4 iron here. These are perfectly set up for my specs, so let's go see just how they perform. So I'm going to start with the 10 iron here. This is Honda's take on a traditional pitching wedge and I do quite like the way they number their clubs to be honest. Now over the ball I would say this is slightly bigger in terms of blade length compared to other kind of players distance offerings. But I do think that the top line is kind of cambered and curved quite well so it doesn't look that big at all. Also the sole width is slightly wider than we typically see in this kind of model, but obviously you can't see that at all here, so it's not really a problem. Felt nice, definitely a launch pretty high, but it is worth knowing here, because the sole width is so wide at the bottom, Homer can actually bring some weight further back away from the club face, which is going to help with that dynamic loft and get you to hit it higher. Pretty consistent in terms of distance so far. Of course, as soon as I say the distance is consistent, I flush one and it goes like six yards further. Typical. I have to say this feels really nice to hit. Pretty happy with the dispersion so far. So that averaged out at 117 yards, my worst shot flew 114 which is what I'd expect with my pitching wedge and my longest shot was up at 121. So we had a 7 yard front to back there which I think is pretty good. A standout piece of data here was definitely the launch angle, this was launching at 29 degrees which is pretty high. I know that in my swing tendencies I already launch it higher so they added tech in these to give you that extra launch as well is probably why these were launching so high. But then in terms of other variables such as peak height and descent angle, these were all really good. As we see quite a lot with this style of iron, the spin was quite low, it was down at the 5500s. But because we've still got that high and that steep descent angle, you're still going to be able to get these to land pretty softly. I was also really impressed with the dispersion. I had one shot that kind of blocked out to the right a little bit, but other than that, the other nine shots all finished within 20 feet of the pin, which is definitely really consistent and will be really great out on the course. Right, let's move up to the 7 iron now and see how that performs. I actually really like the way this sits behind the ball. We've got quite minimal offset, which is definitely my preference, and the top line still looks pretty nice and small, but one thing I would say is the blade length is quite long, but to be honest, I don't really mind that. These are exceptionally easy to launch. These definitely feel like they're going a long way. Even on missed strikes, this flies a really good distance. I actually really love the feel of this. So in terms of distance, that performed pretty well. I averaged out 159 yards and I would say typically for me, I'd be really happy to have it anywhere around the 150. So 159 is definitely a big 7 iron, especially as an average. My shortest shot was down at 155 and my longest shot was up at 163. So an 8 yard difference there, which I think is really good for a 7 iron, especially one in the distance category. Again, in terms of consistency, the dispersion was really good here. Over 70% of my shots finished inside 30 feet of the pin. In terms of launch, these launched really high and they also had a really high peak height. But in terms of descent angle, it probably was a little shallower than I would have expected. 
Right, let's go see how we get on with the four iron now. Typically I don't carry a four iron, I would probably favour a hybrid instead. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the numbers are on this. Now over the ball, this is definitely a bit longer and more elongated than we've seen in some of the shorter irons. And I have to say in terms of shaping, it's very comforting and it really reminds me of kind of a ping iron and the shape and the styling. But I would say that the top line does look a bit smaller. That went a pretty good distance, but I've definitely got a very low trajectory at the moment. I still really like the feel with these. Remarkably, these have actually been pretty consistent in terms of distance so far, which is probably not what I was expecting. Oh, that felt really nice. Really nice ball flight as well, and that actually flew a little bit further. Right, so in terms of distance, that averaged out 182 yards which for me isn't bad with a four iron. I would expect that kind of distance with my four hybrid. But the only problem is in this set, obviously we saw the seven iron going over 160. So you would have kind of expected this to go a bit further. If I use my kind of usual 10 yard gap between each clubs, you would expect this to be much more near that 190 mark. In terms of dispersion, this wasn't bad at all. You can see it's a little bit right bias, but it's quite consistent this way. So you could definitely clean that up with a lie angle change. Now in terms of trajectory, this is probably where I struggled a little bit. You can see the ball flight's coming out quite low and very flat, definitely when you compare it to just how high the 7 iron and the wedge were flying compared to normal. Now this pans out in the numbers because this lower flight combined with the lower spin meant that each shot was running out at least 10 yards. So that's 30 feet. If you're trying to hold a green, you're probably not going to be able to do that with these. So in terms of control and feel, I did like these. And I think there's probably a place for this, say, if you were playing links and you wanted something to get in play off the tee or to run up into the greens. But generally for me, that isn't the type of golf I play and I need something that's going to go high and land softly. So from that point of view, this wasn't quite cutting it. So kind of a story of two halves there. I really loved the control, the dispersion and the distance I got with the short and the mid irons here. But the long irons probably weren't for me. So I think if I was going to use this set, I'd be looking at using these up to a five iron and then probably subbing in a hybrid when we get to the four and the three options. In terms of a player's distance club, I think Homer have done a really great job here of creating something that looks good on the eye, but also definitely produces really impressive distance numbers, especially in that mid iron range. Right, that's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or send me a line on Twitter or Instagram. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications too. If you're after more from Honma, I've already reviewed their game improvement range from this year, so make sure you head over to the equipment playlist and take a look at that. And if you're after more golf content, head to the National Club Golfer social media channels for more.